So today, let's talk about where I would begin with cybersecurity. Like, because I, I get a lot of questions all the time of, you know, okay, so you're, you're in my shoes, Chris. Where would I spend money? What's like the one thing I need? And, you know, it varies from organization to organization, but I can go ahead and give you the biggest thing uh, that is most effective. And in fact, it's not going to cost you much more than a decent amount of time. You may want to hire a consultant to go ahead and take care of it for you initially and then show your IT team how to carry it out in the future, but kind of give that look. But this is this is totally free in pretty much every case. Like I do not know any service that provides this that charges extra for it. It's just a matter of you enabling it, getting it set up for all your team, and then actually using it and making sure it's enforced and like new hires, you set it up. You don't ignore it. You don't set it up for everybody at the time, but then you've hired 10 people since then and they don't have this. So what is this one thing? I'm tempted to leave that to the end of the video, but I'm not going to do that to you because <laughs> this is not a clickbaity video. So the one thing that I'd say every organization needs to do is to make sure that two-factor, sometimes called multi-factor, authentication is turned on for every service that you have that allows it. That's it. If you can do that, that will stop so many things. Now, there's a couple other things I would certainly layer on like right in after that. And I would say, hey, you, you also need this. But I start here because, again, there shouldn't be any cost unless you have somebody come in from the outside and help you. And it is so effective. So with two-factor or multi-factor, whatever you want to call it, whatever your service calls it, it blocks folks from, if they get access to a password, username, those sorts of things to log into a system, it blocks them from it. Because it's usually going to send you a text message. It's going to generate like a one-time code on your phone. And... It's good. You know, most cases, that's the way this two-factor, multi-factor works. So somebody would have to also have access to your text messages, to your phone itself, uh, maybe to the app on the phone. And those are things that are not readily and easily available in most cases. In fact, I would say, like, if somebody's already got access to your phone somehow, too, you've got more significant problems. And study after study has shown that this two-factor, multi-factor is incredibly good at preventing things like account takeovers, which then will prevent uh, your organization from maybe sending out phishing emails, sending out potentially virus-laden emails, because if a hacker gains access to your email, they, they can do whatever they want, right? Trying to carry out wire fraud in the name of your business. These are all things you have to worry about if somebody gets access to specifically your email, but I mean, it could be your accounting system if that's online. Um, you know, on the web more and more, we're, you know, maybe doing things like Dropbox for business, Microsoft OneDrive for business, these sorts of cloud storages. And Microsoft says, I believe it's 95 to 99% effective at stopping account takeovers and hijackings. When you think about the volume of email that's going to come in, even getting through a spam filter to try to fish your employees. And again, if you don't remember what phishing is, uh, what that is, is somebody trying to impersonate uh, a you know reputable authority and look like it's coming from somebody it's not and so whether it's whether somebody's trying to impersonate you as a business leader in the organization trying to impersonate one of uh, you know what, your bank you do business with something like that these things still continue to slip through spam filters it's a big deal so you want to make sure that you've got that locked down you've got an extra layer of protection so the one thing I'm going to say is turn on two-factor and multi-factor for all the things. I'm going to warn you, it's a bit of a pain in the butt, especially things like Office 365. Microsoft kind of has their own interesting implementation there that can cause some headaches. You need to go into it with a plan. You don't just go in some Friday afternoon and say, oh, we're just going to turn it on for everybody because you're going to have a lot of angry employees. You're going to have uh, business may actually grind to a halt because people won't be able to get into systems. They won't know how to set it up. So you have to have a plan for it, but don't delay. You know, Don't spend all your time in planning for this. Turn it on, get it done, because it is so effective at blocking this. Now, I'm going to be back with another video here soon, and I'm going to talk about some additional things that I would recommend layering in. And again, I'm looking more broad-based. In fact, you may watch this next video and say, hey, uh, my organization's already got half those things, which is fantastic. That is great. It's good to be ahead of the curve. It's good to already have those things in place. But you know what we want to look at are just the absolute basics that every organization needs uh, to have here. So. 
Um, I'm going to end it there. I appreciate you guys watching. Chris Michaelek here with another cybersecurity video. I've got more. But hey, if you got a suggestion, question, something that's always confused you about it, something you want to see a video on, something you just want your question answered, put it down below in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for me, and click all so you'll be notified of my next video, because otherwise the YouTube, guy of the regular, YouTube algorithm, can't speak today, uh, will not necessarily tell you when I've got a new video. And these are things you don't want to miss, especially since I do occasionally do timely videos, like a big hack is in the news or something like that. I'll do a video on it and we'll, uh, we'll talk about it there. So make sure to do those steps and I'll talk to you guys again in the next video. Thank you so much for watching.